How's everybody doing? My name is Augie with VIP Playlist. I'm here with my lovely co-host. Adam, what's up, everyone? Today we have, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Uh, tell us what you do and, and uh, like your band name and all that. Yeah, yeah. We're Deep Out Brindle. I'm Diego. And this is... I'm Alistair. And Sweet. we are mostly a instrumental band from the LA area. So it's Deep Al Brindle? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know, like, we know, we hardly ever ask this question, but this is just kind of like such an odd name that I got to ask. Like, what, what is the name of your band, man? It honestly doesn't have a meaning. And every time we talk about it, it's like, man, we probably should have ch- chosen an easier name. But <laughs> the time when we were deciding on what name to give it, I had loosely been releasing music as Brindle. Okay. Which is a color and then oh. or color wave. It's mostly for dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs. And then Alistair, I kind of asked him, I was like, what, what uh, name would you give yourself? The idea was to have like two, like almost like two producers. Yeah. Yeah. Do this thing together. And his Instagram handle has always been deep Al based on like deep house music. Okay. And, it just kind of stayed that way, and we just, at this point, we're too far in to change it. But it <laughs> I, do it. It I really like it. I think it's unique. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. definitely. It uh, sounds. It sounds like there's a lot behind it, but I it, I can see you know how you guys came up with it. I think yeah. it's cool. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, there really is no meaning behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair that enough. works, man. That works. <laughs> So today we are going to make a Spotify playlist of some of y'all's favorite music growing up and, and all the way up until present day. Is there anything you want to name this? Um, let's go with uh, Curl Wave in, in honor of both of us having curly hair. Yeah, man. I like that curly hair. Thank you. <laughs> I just cut my hair. It was, uh, I, think, I think it was like 15 inches. Oh wow! Nice. Yeah. I didn't have them curls. So. Photo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah, it was uh, that was taken like two months ago. So, uh, and right now I have like really, really short hair. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a K-pop cut right now. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right <laughs> That's uh, short on the sides, long on the top. You know. <laughs> okay. Right on. But uh, like, so grown up haircut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny you said it because everybody tells me I look younger with shorter hair, so I don't know. <laughs> right on. Shave a couple of years off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, one of the first questions we kind of like to get into is, um, do y'all remember like listening to music maybe with your parents or your grandparents and uh, any of those songs that ever stuck with you? Maybe that they showed you or anything like that from your yeah, younger years? Core memories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd have to say for me, um, she, my, my mom would always listen to a Spanish artist named Luis Miguel. Yep. Um, I, don't, I can't recall any of the song names, but I also, she used to listen to like Chumbawamba and the Crown oh, nice. and Blondie. And so like all those, all those popular songs are just, anytime it's being played on the radio, it just takes me back. Yeah. Yeah. Chumbawamba. That's a. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, she played that uh, "Get Knocked Down" song like. Yeah, get knocked down. Just over it up again. Over again. <laughs> yeah, so so Augie, just to give you a a little bit of insight here, Luis Miguel is like massive dude. He's got like over thirteen million listeners. Like, oh my god! Monthly. So you could that's literally, insane. if you just want to pick, you know, a song or two off of his. Yeah, that's whatever fine, most listen to on Spotify is. I promise it it's it's a hit so if there's that the time with y'all yeah he's the biggest latin pretty fan. much yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan of Luis Miguel so yeah I mean Diego if you want to uh yeah if you want to pick the playlist off yeah, pick yeah. a song from him when you, if, if you have a favorite or, or a couple Suave is probably my favorite Suave right. yeah actually Luis Miguel inspired a lot of not a lot but a few of the sounds and new songs on our latest record that's awesome. That's really right on. cool. Diego, you want to go next? You know, I didn't grow up in a very musical household, and a lot of the music that was played was either uh, there's a popular radio station here in town called 94.7 The Wave, which is 
at the time was strictly smooth jazz. Um, so I don't remember a ton of like names. I just remember jazz. And besides that, it was maybe like I grew up in a in a Christian home, so yeah. kind of like Spanish worship music. Okay. Um, so some someone like maybe Marcos Wheat, if if anybody knows who that is. <laughs> um i'm half mexican um but uh my mom okay. where my mom's white and then she uh my stepdad is white and those are the two that raised me so i didn't grow up right. i don't know spanish or any of that stuff but i did grow up in a christian household so i know what that's like <laughs> okay yeah marcos is kind of the equivalent of luis miguel but for christian okay. spanish christian music okay and, wow. Marcos, we probably stole a lot of music from Luis Miguel during that time. <laughs> <laughs> Is it so, with like W-I-T-T? Yeah, W-I-T-T. Okay. And do you got a song that you remember? Um, it would be something like, let me, let me pull it up too. There, there's a lot. One second. You're good, man. While he's pulling that up, you, you mentioned Chamba Wamba. Do you want to throw the, um, maybe the Get Knocked Down song? Uh, I guess, I guess if people want to listen to it. Hey man, that's a good, that's a good yeah, song. There, there's no limits to what goes no, on. No, man, we'll throw anything on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about Blondie? You want to throw a Blondie song or no? You're good. Yeah. What's, I mean, what's that song? It's like, I wake up in the morning, I go outside. I, um, I wrote the, in the chat. I wrote the, Okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, yeah. um. Four non blondes. Uh, what's yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that song. That's a good one. Yeah, I said, hey, <laughs> that's a good fucking song right there, yeah. man. Uh, chat. Very, very chat. interesting. So, um, what you? I, I noticed you guys. I mean, obviously, you're mostly like you know just instrumental. Um, you know, I think you guys can play like some piano, drums, guitar. Like, what's your background? How'd you guys get into this? Did you take lessons, self-taught, you know, kind of run us through that? Um, I grew up, again, I didn't grow up in a very musical household, yeah. but my introduction to music was either through playing music in friends' living rooms, garages, mm -hmm. um, and at churches. A lot of a lot of my upbringing was, you know, late late nights and late days at churches and just spending a lot of time. So I, I gained a lot of experience, um, all self-taught, but in a live environment, churches was where I where I gained the most experience. Okay, very okay. cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, for me, um, I didn't really start playing music till my maybe early teens. Um, if I wasn't skateboarding, I was playing music with my friends. Um, we would learn our favorite band. So at the time, um, I was introduced to like Incubus and Deftones. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Um, so big fan of them. Uh, I mean, I remember doing talent shows, uh, covering Pardon Me. And <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and that's that's actually like a pretty challenging song on drums. So that yeah. I put yes. in a lot of practice for that. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like, where i started playing music it was just kind of the culture of 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 my life at the time yeah yeah so uh incubus man you want to throw pardon me on there since that one's got a little yeah talent show <laughs> that's a good song uh a couple years ago man this was a while ago me and adam actually saw deftones and incubus play in dallas that's dope yeah, they, yeah. They've, they've gone on tour a couple times together yeah it was um, such a good show yeah, I mean, Jose Pasillas is a, a wonderful drummer, and that, that was one of my favorite bands uh, growing up, you know, 10 or 11 years old, as well as nice. Deftones. So yeah, um, I'm well in, in viewed in, in, the, in those bands for sure. Yeah, Brandon yeah. Boyd, I think they played like a two-hour set. Brandon Boyd sounded phenomenal Probably. the entire way through. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, he, he was a fantastic singer. I mean... Yes. I remember during the whole morning view, like that inspired me so much that they were able to get a house in Malibu and write and record morning view. Um, and so like that always stuck with me. And when Diego and I had the opportunity to, to write music, um, we found a cabin up in, in Wrightwood and we spent mm -hmm. a week and kind of, you know, lived that, that 
that idea. It was yeah. really cool. That's yeah, awesome, well, man. That's really what cool. What was that experience like? I mean, was it like wake up, music, go to bed, do it all over again? Like, were you guys even sleeping? I mean, or was it just <laughs> you guys just immersing yourselves in this project? It what was, do you remember, Diego? <laughs> honestly, I remember the times of not making music more than the times we were making oh, music. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't super extensive, but I remember at some point, uh, we went there up there a few times, actually, but I remember at some point we made dinner and we probably watched Cops or, <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know, some show that was on TV. Yeah. And we just all watched that or waking up in the morning and either going for a walk together or yeah. just, you know, kind of bullshitting through the day and some cool things happen musically, but I think it was a cool experience. I think the first time we went up there was at the beginning of 2020, right? Yeah, right before the yeah, world. Right before oh, the- man. Yeah. yeah. I think we had the idea that something was coming, but we didn't know how severe it was going to be. So I don't think anyone we did. Already, yeah. yeah, we were already in isolation and... We, I, you know, we experienced some really cool times together, but musically speaking, like, yeah, there was cool moments, but nothing that was like super, we, we don't work that way anyways. We're yeah. Not, like, intense. So, yeah. So you guys are like a, like an electronic band. You also, I'm not sure if it was recent or not, but uh, signed to Tooth and Nail Records. Yeah. That's we- awesome, man. That's really cool. I was a Tooth and Nail kid growing up, so. Yeah, That's sure. really awesome, man. How did that come about? I so we're both me and me and Alistair are both audio engineers for a living, production, kind of whatever whatever is needed. And I had been working a gig at a church in um it's called Bel Air down in the LA area. Okay. And I had been working there for a few months, uh, just running their front of house very like hired gun kind of kind of position yeah and somehow i had started having having conversations with their music director or like worship i don't know pastor i don't remember his exact title yeah and, and um we bonded over kind of a poster child of instrumental chill wave music uh taiko and we talked about him and and we just kind of bonded over that and then a few weeks later, I think he mentioned to me that he had found out of the music that I was making, which was very similar to Tycho, instrumental, electronic. Mm-hmm. And I think he expressed that he really liked it. And from there, the conversation started like, oh, I'm I'm an A&R for Tooth & Nail um, Records. Wow. And I, I kind of sent your music to some of the other people that are you know, on the label. And a lot of people liked it and they, they want to send you a deal memo. So that happened pretty quickly. And at some point they sent us a deal memo and I, I shot it over to Alistair and see what he thought. I, I didn't grow, I didn't grow up with tooth and nail as, as a thing. I, it was just, wasn't part of my scene. And yeah, maybe, yeah. And maybe I was a bit too young for it, but I had loosely heard of it. But, you know, when I called Alistair, it was, you know, he he grew up kind of immersed with the bands that came out of Tooth and Nail. So it was kind of a cool moment to kind of share that. With yeah, Alistair. yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Things just kind of worked out. That's really cool. Yeah, we we were, we grew up uh, Tooth and Nail. Any, any record you bought from Tooth and Nail Solid State, you knew it was going to be a banger. So <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, but Brandon Abel, uh, the guy who founded tooth and nail solid state he i mean he always knows what he's doing you know he, he's changed it up a lot throughout the years as far as what bands he's signing and everything like that yeah. but he always seems to do really good with them so he changed it up cool. for us for sure yeah yeah <laughs> hey man you got to trust the process you know? <laughs> yeah we're uh, you know i think they've been also experimenting some like a lot of the bands they've signed more recently uh, maybe around the time we signed or maybe a year before that have been a bit different from what I guess has been more of a staple of tooth and nail. Yeah. Okay. 
branching out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. for sure, man. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see that that uh that shift. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Brandon Abel, he he knows what he's doing. That's a he's been running that thing for since I think like ninety three. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's been a long time. So yeah, for sure. But uh, oh, Alice, you said you you were a tooth and nail kid. Yeah, I mean, um, I remember like a band called Project Eighty Six. Oh my yeah, God, yes. And Blindside. I, I remember mm-hmm. looking at the back of a Blindside CD and seeing the tooth and nail logo. Um, that's that memory's always stuck with me. And then even with like the Under Oath, Norma Jean. Um, it's cool that uh, I know Acceptance wasn't like originally on the label, but it's cool yeah. that they are now. So, yeah, all those bands. The yeah, almost. For sure. Oh band. yeah, yeah. That's that was exactly the era that I that I loved so much. Like Project Eighty Six was was mm-hmm. awesome. So mm-hmm. growing up like in church and everything, mm-hmm. I couldn't really listen yeah. to a whole lot. But Tooth and Nail, they brought me a lot of bands that I could listen to. <laughs> so they were actually cool. Like they were actually really good. Yeah, they were yeah very good at, and uh, but I know a lot of bands because uh, I listen to like uh, I used to not any, not not so much anymore just been too busy to but uh, Emory their podcast and they talk about a lot of I mean tooth and nail bands or anything like that so mm-hmm. a bunch of new we ones just, as well. We just saw them when when was that Alistair? Uh, it was in fall of last year. Yeah. It was when that that tooth and nail tour was happening. Yeah, so they're really they catch one of the shows. They're oh, really man, they're fun so to see good. live. Yeah. They're so good live. They actually, Adam wasn't a fan of them until he saw them live. He he heard their songs, he didn't like them. And then he <laughs> saw them live and he was like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> like <laughs> to, to frame it though, like at that time in my life, I was probably like 15 and I was like that kid that was like, if it's just not just the most hardcore thing in the world, I'm not into it. It was more like yeah. an image thing. And then I yeah. saw them, I was like, dude, these guys are lovely. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I had like, how could you not like them? So um and they're yeah. old now too yeah, yeah i know and they're still putting out they're music like good out. music too like God yeah me. yeah so, they're, they're putting yeah. out a lot of great stuff it was my first experience seeing them we the the label invited us to come out and just you know see what it what it was going to be like and uh-huh. um we walked in and Aaron gillespie was doing like an acoustic uh set as soon as we walked in it felt like he was starting when we walked in no oh, perfect and then and then emory that, that, that's right right emory played right after yeah, yeah. and then yeah, norma awesome. Jean was supposed to close it or had they already played but i remember i um, can't remember yeah well that's awesome man so um alistair's given us a bunch of bands i know you said you didn't really grow up in music but do you recall maybe when you started getting into it a little more and what you were listening to yeah, like the stuff you started. I've got a bunch of bands for Alistair to, to put on here. So mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to get some for you, Diego. <laughs> um, I probably started getting pretty serious and kind of developing a taste for, you know, my own taste in music. Mm-hmm. Probably when I was about 14 or 15. Um, okay. Bands like, you know, Coldplay. Okay. U2. Mute math was huge for me. I don't know. I'd have to find my old iPod and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just an interesting dynamic between the two of you. You know, you got the punk rock, you know, hardcore kid, and then like the alternative indie rock. So right, right. That's really cool though. Y'all, y'all brought it together and and make what you're making now. But mm-hmm. uh, we can go with those three too. So let's go with. Uh, you said Deftones, so let's get a Deftones song. My pick would either be RX Queen or Digital mm-hmm. Bath. Ooh, both good choices. Um, you, can do, you can do more than one, Augie. Yeah, yeah, I was going to put both of them on there. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and then we'll go uh, Coldplay. Um, probably Talk. Talk. Nice. And then let's do Blindside. That was like one of my favorite bands growing up. Oh, Blindside? Okay, yeah. Let me, give me, just give me a second on that. You're I gotta, good, I gotta yeah. look through it. Um, <laughs> what, mute, what Mute Math uh, song would you pick? Yeah, Diego? Mute Math. Diego? Um, I'd probably go for a song called Stall Out. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, so for Blindside, I mean, gotta go with like Pitiful and Sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah those are good, man. Oh, those are I, so love, good. I love the that whole silence album is great yeah 
Yeah, I remember like every bridge on that on that album was so creative. I always stuck out to me too. Yeah, I, I think they I wrote found the it. coolest bridges. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I think uh, I used to buy all the tooth and nail samplers, and I think that's how I discovered Blindside. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then you two. Um, you two would probably be probably where the streets have no name, which is okay. kind of their one of their biggest songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> acceptance you kind of got excited when, when you mentioned acceptance acceptance so i'm gonna pick so contagious okay. i have a little backstory about that song um i used to travel to like uh because i live in california i used to travel to fresno to play drums for this band um called current affair and the lead singer mm -hmm. of that band was jordan felice you reckon if you know who that is he's he's pretty big in the ccm world and I used to cover that song with him. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. CCM, is that? Or Christian, maybe I'm saying it wrong. Christian music. Contemporary Christian music. Ah, yes. okay, okay, I got you, nice. That's there awesome. go with the big brains. Yeah, he's got it. <laughs> I've been around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of uh, cool that you guys don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, speaking of uh, CCM, you, had, you also had uh, like one of the biggest uh, contemporary Christian music artists on Tooth and Nail with uh, Jeremy Camp. I don't Damn, know if y'all heard of him. Yeah, dude, he went like yeah. RIA certified gold while he was on Tooth yeah. and Nail. I didn't know he was on Tooth and Nail. I didn't either, but I uh, yeah, he was on Tooth and Nail. He, he, he's on their wiki. Okay, he probably yeah. made him a lot of money. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man. yeah. You know he he probably <laughs> sold more than Under Oath, man. Everybody wants to say Under Oath was their big band. No, it was Jeremy uh, Camp for sure. To be dude. Honest. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Um, did we get yeah. an Incubus song? Yes. No. Okay. Yes, we got Pardon Me. All right. I'm gonna yeah. Pass yeah, yeah. Boys, now. No, no, no. We got Pardon Me. <laughs> Very cool. Um, I want to add another Incubus song. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Uh, Eleven a.m. That's okay. A uh, that one's great. We don't get that one much. That that makes me happy yeah the deep cuts deep, deep cuts. cuts yeah man <laughs> yeah i mentioned earlier y'all are an electronic uh style band you i mean you have guitars and everything else i saw the key tower too that's badass i always love when people use the key towers <laughs> you know you don't see them much anymore so uh but what kind of led y'all in that direction uh electronic music yeah um i don't know why why we went in that direction I, maybe maybe it's a lot of what I had been doing for a couple of years was a lot of synth work for different projects. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have like walls of synth. Yeah, I see all your. Yeah, yeah I see that. <laughs> and it, it just in this in this area where we live, it's very um, we call it the high desert. It's 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 not LA. It, you know, anytime people find out where we live, it's like, why do you live there? Like it's it's kind of a a look down city it's like a commuter town people just sleep here okay like very sprawl like cookie cutter houses everywhere it, gotcha. it's, it's very boring there's not much to do so i had kind of become in this area like the synth kid i've worked on a lot of projects for a lot of people around town and i just kind of i guess got kind of good at it and that just kind of became part of what i did so when me and alistair started doing stuff together that just kind of came with me and we mm -hmm. just started kind of pairing loops or just small ideas with cool electronic sounds and then Alistair would drum to them and then we would just kind of patch these songs together and yeah yeah but there were there were there really are the origins of this band was non-intentional we were just getting together to jam I had I had been dealing with a lot of stress from work Mm -hmm. And I needed certain outlet to right. just just unwind, and that became spending countless hours in Alistair's uh, rehearsal <laughs> room, just yeah. jamming on loops of songs. And the intention was never to make it a band. We we had both been in bands. We'd both kind of just been turned not turned off, but maybe not wanting to pursue that at the time. Yeah. And one thing led to the next, and we were like well let, let's put some songs together and let's put some videos together mm -hmm. and i think we both since we come from a production standpoint 
it's not just about writing music and putting music out like we we see the next thing just because we've done it for so many people and just kind of making other people's dreams happen then we realize like we have all the shit to make really cool things right so why not yeah and speaking of that i uh obviously to prepare for these we kind of delve ourselves in your work um obviously your music we pretty much listen to anything that we can get our hands on uh, on spotify and obviously we just immerse ourselves in your social media and i will say your visuals are very very incredible quality um you know clear i like i mean even just the most minute things from lighting or angles um camera work it's really good stuff and uh i I hope more people get their eyes on it for sure but you mentioned you guys had been in in previous bands which i mean that's kind of the story of most of the people we speak to but how long have you guys been sort of doing this together uh we started Probably uh, we put out our first song. Uh, the, the original idea was, hey, let's do a live video uh, with visuals and, and and create a video around that. And so I think we put that out in 2018. Okay. And so we did two videos and then I was like, hey, we should put these up on Spotify. And then... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were, we're, we're, we're going to put them up. It was, they were just going to be videos. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Alistair was like, yeah, let's just put them out. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess 2018 is like an official timestamp of when we started yeah. doing Okay. Well, aren't you glad you did? How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You like that? How do we do it? You like that? All right. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, so, everybody always asks us. Uh, where do we find these playlists that we make on this show? And we find them on, you can just follow us on Spotify at VIP, uh, L-A-Y-L-I-S-T. And I'll also leave links on all of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find all the playlists there as well. I have a link tree and that ad is VIP, L-A-Y-L-I-S-T, P-O-D, all one word. And that's where you find these things at. So, yep. So, no more complaining. Yeah. And I told uh, you. you go don't find listen, them. On you. Go, <laughs> go find them. Go listen to them. Give us feedback, please. Yeah. Uh, um, leave us a review. Uh, yeah. It, because we love you. And that would be the coolest thing ever. Um, subscribe and follow. Subscribe and follow. I feel like that's a YouTube thing, but no, I'd do it either anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't find the button, I don't know. Uh, you're not DM me. hard enough. DM me. Yeah. Um, leave us a review. That'd be really cool. And then go follow us on our socials and on Spotify to keep up with the playlist. Thank you. Y'all mentioned, you know, like the pending and everything like that. There's a lot of bands that, especially newer bands or like, you know, not well-established bands or anything like that, that didn't quite make it through the pandemic. Was that, how hard was that on y'all and, and how did it affect y'all too as like a band? Honestly, it affected us more as professionals and how to make money because our industry was one of the first to go. Uh, yeah, and for sure. Allowed to come back. But um, a lot of cool things came from it. Like we got signed in 2020. We finished the record. Uh, or we started a record in 2020, but we released it in 2021. So we we worked on music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 2020, um, we spent the time up in Wrightwood. Um, I don't know. We we did a a live show pretty soon after the pandemic um, was like at the, like the very not very beginning, maybe like in June ish. We did a a live broadcast um, through Instagram and and Facebook mm-hmm. and YouTube. So we did like a live concert. Yeah, and I, I want to say we we did that before even the big people started doing uh, live concerts through mm-hmm. social media. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't years, wanna, huh? I don't want to say that we <laughs> that we inspired the world, but trendsetters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do remember thinking like I haven't seen this yet, and we should, we had all the means to do it, and 
yeah. we we put on a full production yeah towards the beginning of the pandemic so uh you know she was going crazy in the world um and you know sad all that happened um, yeah for sure but personally i feel like 2020 was you know i i don't mean this to sound like yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was cool dark, yeah. yeah 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 no i get was, it it was a cool time for me it's yeah, all relative. Yeah, I know for sure. It's yeah. all relative. It's how you look at it and how you react to it. And mm-hmm. we, I mean, there there was a lot of, of bad things going on for sure. But, you know, as, as far as y'all's career and being an artist and being a band, that's what y'all wanted to do. And y'all made the most of it. So, yeah, that's I mean, cool, the, the, the EP that we put out after was called No Rush, No Curfew. And that really kind of explained how that how that music came about, because yeah. we really weren't doing much um, except writing so yeah mm-hmm. well, yeah cool. i mean i i won't i won't lie I, i'd like to go to if i i'm able to i mean i live in dallas so most artists or bands come through here so I, I mean i'll go to a show every month or at least every other month so that pandemic was really really tough for that because that's i don't do i don't mean i don't do a whole lot of things so going and seeing live music is something i really enjoy so i yeah same partook in the sort of digital you know, concerts where you would buy like, I don't know, whatever it was, $10, $20 ticket and they would sort of live stream it. Like I did one, the the one that Zayo did and the production on it was really awesome. And I was just so excited uh, because it was just the next best thing, right? Because I could go and watch it uh, in person. So that's awesome. Yes. There was a lot of bands that did a really good job on that. Like I remember Mm -hmm. purchasing the Under Oath um, live stream where they did all Mm -hmm are two of their albums or, or yeah. they did four. Yeah. So I, I purchased all those and it was really cool to watch that. I know 21 pilots did a really cool live stream, um, more late, but yeah. 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 Well, just so- the quality, like the, because of what's available to them, cause they can do it, you know, in different settings and probably with better sound, obviously. So, yeah. um, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So ours were, was free. And it was pretty good. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, y'all had all the yes. equipment from being producers, right? That's cool, man. Yeah, if oh, you yeah. get a chance and you haven't, haven't checked it out, get, give it a peep. And I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I've 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 watched it. Um, I obviously I I, I thought it I thought it was really cool. Yeah, right. for sure. Nice. Was that is that the one that was done in in the house? Someone's house? Is that no? This is the other no, one. This okay. is pretty early on. We we call it escapada. Which, oh yes. I saw that one too. Which means like escape. Uh, yeah. 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 Cool, man. So, uh, so y'all, y'all said you were, you said you were producers. Do y'all produce your own music or do y'all send that out? Uh, I, you know, I, I produce all, we produce all our own music. Okay. We collaborate with people for yeah. years. Mm-hmm. I've produced and collaborated for other people. Yeah. There's been like an uptick in, in, producing your own music especially like with the tiktok room and everything like that and i noticed that a lot of the bands that did make it had somebody on the in their band that knew how to how to do all that stuff record and mix at least at the at the minimum mix everything so yeah yeah it's probably a lot easier for y'all just because having that knowledge yeah if it wasn't for diego none of this music would be put out because he mixes and <laughs> he's he's the organized one and makes the tough decisions of where a song goes. So like mm-hmm. all that stuff, I'm like, well, what, you know, I, I second guess myself a lot. So yeah. Shout out to him. Hell yeah, dude. For sure. Diego, did you study that or you just kind of self-taught just growing up? Yeah. Just self-taught. I grew up watching heroes and mm-hmm. try to, and you know, devour everything that was behind the scenes of, you know, anybody that I'd liked. And whatever those little details that I could pick up on how things were made, mm-hmm. you know, trial and error, you know, the first music sure. that I made for people sucked ass, you know, it yeah. just wasn't good. <laughs> but, you know, I was a kid then and, um, people, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the people who let me, you know, try things for free mm-hmm. and, you know, just, I never, I never gave up, you know, even, even through really tough criticism from friends that I trust, like, you know, this is not good. Yeah. Uh, I continued on and, you know, I've, I've bettered my craft and, yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful that I'm multifaceted. You know, I can, I can be a recording engineer. I can be a 
you know, I wouldn't call myself a, a mix engineer, like a, a master of it, but I, I can, I can get stuff sounding pretty decent from the video standpoint. You know, I can direct, I can edit, mm-hmm. I can, I can pretty much just kind of run everything pretty proficiently. Yeah. So I'm, I'm grateful that that allows us to do certain things that would cost other people thousands of dollars. Yeah. 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 Yeah, For sure. For sure. You guys, uh, you mentioned that sort of criticism, like there's two sides to it, right? Cause it, the criticism, especially if it's from your, you know, really good friends one, I mean, it's, it always stings, but sometimes it's like, it may have helped, right? Like maybe you needed to hear that. Not saying that it depends on how they did it, of course. But, um, we talk about self-doubt, uh, a few times on, on this and it's awesome that you kind of harnessed it. And I mean, look at you now, you guys, I, I think what you guys are putting out sounds great. Um, very yeah, for sure. I like the way you guys kind of mess with sounds. That's literally, I have no other way to put that. <laughs> and, <that's, laughs> and I mean that in a complimentary way. Thank you. Yeah. The production is really, is really nice for sure. It sounds very clean, very, very smooth and like the transitions and everything are, are awesome. So Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. I'm very curious because we've had a couple of, of artists on here not very many. And uh, I'm always curious about the ones that didn't grow up in like a musical setting. Like, do you think that that's helped you or hurt you in like this? Because a lot of a lot of people we talk to, they grew up with you know their parents loving music and constantly playing it around them and everything like that. And yeah. uh, I'm just kind of curious as, as to uh, whether you think that helped or or hurt you when it comes to like listening to new things. Or I do think it's hindered me in certain ways. Even I think from a taste standpoint, I feel like people who grow up exposed to a vast amount of music, mm-hmm. um, it's all it's all it's, it's also my like exposing somebody to culture and. It just, I don't know. I feel like people have a a larger taste for music and sometimes mine is smaller than most people. So I feel like it has maybe hindered me in ways. Um, sometimes, a lot of the time people ask me about, you know, some huge song that I should know, you know, as a musician. <laughs> and I have no idea what they're talking about. So maybe like musical vocabulary. Yeah. It, something that I maybe wished I would have been exposed to a bit more. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the things that I did dive into, you know, I dove in pretty deep. Yeah. uh, But it's such a small, you know, a small part of the entirety. So, yeah, I, 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 I do wish I was exposed to more music at a young age. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, I can, um, I can relate to that for sure. Though uh, I, I don't know a lot of things. Augie is sort of the encyclopedia of music. Yeah. I, I'm it's, the more niche kind of. It's just yeah. funny though because I, my parents didn't listen to music hardly at all. This is something that like I yeah. developed a fa- fascination with at a young age, and just I just kept diving. You know, dove head first into it, and I just. You know, I don't, uh, they never would let me learn how to like play instruments or anything like that. So I just literally listened to everything that I could get my hands on. And that's from like rap to rock to electronic to, you know, like techno, dubstep, pretty much anything except like the only thing I don't really care for is country. <laughs> but I mean, I listen to pretty much everything. So I like but, mixing country live, but yeah, I, I wouldn't play it. Yeah. On my yeah. Off time. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's not something I really, I mean, it's, it's probably has a lot to do with us growing. Like we grew up in like a really small town. So like everybody yeah. here listens to country music. So I, like I heard it constantly and I just, I don't know. It just wasn't something there. You know, everybody here wears like square toe boots and Wranglers and drives oh. big jacked up trucks. And <laughs> I really didn't care for all that. You know, I wanted to hear something else. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh man, I had something. Um, so yeah, okay, yeah. Your newest EP that y'all released uh, January thirteenth is called Late Night, Early Morning. Mm-hmm. And I read something, Alistair. I think it was on your Facebook, and it, it, you mentioned where the title of it came from. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, during that time when we were writing stuff, it was when the end of the pandemic. I think it was the end or it's like towards where things were starting to open back up. The music industry started coming back up. So our jobs were now available again. And I just remember for for myself that 
like because I'm a live sound engineer um, and I I do it freelance. So like, Ooh, man, I built that up times clientele. Yeah, I built up clientele the last, you know, 10, 15 years and they just all hit me up at once. So yeah. I went from like doing nothing to stage managing two local venues, um, starting a new like R&B showcase with a promoter and both Diego and I work for uh, churches for house of worship. And so that, that kind of kept us like the churches didn't shut down. Um, but yeah. So all of a sudden all my time is getting soaked up by work. Yeah. And so when we started, when we were trying to pursue the the process of, of, of writing, it was a lot of late nights and then a lot of early mornings. Cause we all had to go back to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that's kind of the way that, I viewed it. Um, what do you think, Diego? How is it for you? Yeah, same thing. And for me, it wasn't as much as Alistair where, you know, Alistair also has kids. So it's like, got to get kids to school. And yeah. The next oh, yeah. And then typically when we could work would be late. But a lot of it came from, I, I always wanted like a two part. Our first EP is called No Rush, No Curfew. And the second one is called Late Night, Early Morning. So it's a it's kind of okay. a transition. Yeah. Uh, this one is juvenile. We have no jobs. We can stay up as late as we want. We, you know, <laughs> we spend hours working together. And then there's this, this this new one that is like, okay, we have jobs. We have families yeah, to attend. A little more grown up now. Yeah, we we have we have shit to handle the next yeah, responsibilities. Day. Yeah. yeah we can't spend all this time so even sonically i wanted this this latest cp to sound like a more mature us and just kind of us stepping into certain things like we we worked with the producer with for this one you know as opposed to the other one we we, it was all self-produced this one we had some more you know weight into it we we played more of a producer role for one of the songs on there and collaborated with, with some label mates of ours so yeah, everything about it was just like this is us kind of leveling up and being a more mature band, I guess. Yeah, that that, that, that was the feeling of it. Yeah, for sure. That's that's actually why we record these at this time is because I've got kids and Adam. He's a he's got a a big boy. Well, we both have big boy jobs, but <laughs> when, Adam works a little later than I do. But I take care of the kids as soon as I get off. So. We're, this is like the only free time we have is like eight thirty at night. <laughs> so, well, it's yeah, eight thirty yeah. for us. I'm sure it's like what six thirty for y'all. Six almost seven now. Seven, seven twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Seven twenty there now. Yeah, it's like nine. nine here. It's nine twenty here. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel that one hundred percent. You know, but you know, if you have a passion for it, you you find a way to make it work. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome, that, man. Yeah, that was that was kind of it for for this EP. We we just wanted. Obviously, we had to keep working. Um, both to make money and to keep, you know, keep this, this band thing going too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have five songs on the CP, um, when time runs out, I H Y paradigm prologue and out of love featuring kids. That's the label mates. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does I H Y stand for? It's an- another one of those that's open-ended <laughs> for whatever you want it to be a lot for a lot of people. It's like, I hate you. For for me, you know, it means I have you. Okay. So, but it's just it, it, <laughs> for for interpretation, which, whichever way you want to. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm I'm gonna go with I heart you. Yeah. I heart you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that that that's that's it too. Uh, so you got out of love was the single from from the EP. Um. No, I one think of them. I, one of them? I-H-Y, okay. Yeah. I-H-Y. Oh, there was two singles, IHY and Out of Love. Uh, so what, working with, with kids, was that just like a full-on collaboration or did y'all just like leave a section open for them or how did that go? Um, we So that song, as most of our music, is instrumental and we, we had written that out. It was kind of fully formed. And we had feel, we had felt like, man, this this song, we really like it but it's missing vocals. And we, we toyed with the idea of, of me doing stuff to it. 
but nothing was coming to it naturally. And then the producer we we had worked with also felt the same way. Like it'd be cool to get someone on this. Like we thought of people that he knew and nothing, nothing really worked out. So we had already had a kind of a friendship going with the band kids. And I, in passing, just kind of like asked them like, Hey, are, would you guys be interested in maybe doing some vocals for this? So I sent it to them and they're like, hell yeah, man, we're, we really like it. And so, yeah, they, they, they were like, send us the stems and we'll work on something. So it was pretty quick, very easy. Like they really liked it. And then they sent us a pass. I think, I think I maybe logged on, on a zoom once with them just to kind of work through some things, but it was, they sent us something. We we're like, yeah, this, this is, we really like it. And and that was kind of it. Nice. Well, that's awesome. No, that's awesome. Um, wow. We say the same thing, Augustine, like all the time. I know. <laughs> um, speaking of, of vocals, the other EP, uh, Depp, right? That's that's you, right, Diego? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Uh, I saw, I think, one of your studio update videos about sort of what it was about. And it definitely resonated with me. I'm a first generation. My parents came from Mexico early oh, yeah early uh had to be 80 because then my brother was born like 81 so i mean all that stuff it's uh it resonates it resonates with me uh the whole idea of them coming here and giving up basically the comfort of their home and their language yeah. and their family um for literally one sole purpose and that's to provide something better for um us right and not taking that for granted so i thought that was really cool that you uh, talked about that and we're open about it right on yeah it, it means a lot to me i mean the sacrifices not just for me you know i'm I'm just one of millions um, oh yeah absolutely and, and I'm, I'm grateful for those sacrifices and what has came from it so mm -hmm. i got a funny story about adam's mama <laughs> <laughs> me, me and Adam have been friends for 20 years. And uh, when Adam graduated high school, or not high school, just college, uh, Adam graduated college, and I, I caught a ride with his parents up to uh, Dallas because they live uh, in the same town I do. So I caught a ride with them up to Dallas. But I drove over there that morning, and on my way over there, I stopped and I got some kolaches, and I, I ate them. I got there, and Adam's dad was cooking breakfast, and he was like, oh, you want some breakfast? And I was like, oh, no, I mean, I already ate. And, and his mom looked at me, and she said, oh, no, 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 you eat. <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess I'm eating two breakfasts. No one goes unfed. And he's got yeah. Home. Yeah. No, it's, it's, how we show, it's how we show love, really. Yeah, but we go over to Adam's house for Thanksgiving, and we have to take home, like, six to-go boxes because they're like, keep, keep filling it up. <laughs> yeah, you got to take it. It's disrespectful to not take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, not to mention, so I do have a pretty big family, but the Thanksgivings have gotten smaller and smaller as the years have gone on. Everyone's growing up, having kids doing their own thing. But yeah. they still cook as though 30 people are going to show up, but there's yeah, 10 yeah. of us now. Or, and so it's <laughs> yeah. like, please yeah. take food, because I don't want to eat leftovers for like a month, for please. Months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome though. They always make me tamales, and I go over there and pick them up. The last last time I had to take another to go box as well. He, your dad made me fill up two to go boxes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, all that to say, it's like Hispanic culture. You know, I'm I'm indulged in it, and I I you know kind of pay my respect to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Whichever way I can. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess bringing it back to music you guys have you know maybe some some friends or just artists you like now you just want to shout out we can throw them on the playlist i know we talked about sort of your early stage and middle kind of sort of middle stage when you start to get your own taste but what about now um uh, most recently um turnstile just put out a new album well i guess mm -hmm. not new but yeah um there i'm i'm a fan like for I've been sure, a band, yeah. fan for a while, but that, that just, that album, you know, even my kids listen to that album and they're like <laughs> seven and 10. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Turnstile is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for uh, me, there's a Taiwanese band called Sunset Roller Coaster that I've been enjoying for a couple of years now that um, they're really good. Um, okay. There's another kid. That is pretty big now. His name is Kuko. 
he is from the LA area too. And he is, I would call him like poster child for bedroom lo-fi pop music. Okay. Uh, he, he's blown up. He's, he's, he's huge. Um, who else? Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to, I have that's to look. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, yeah. I guess we can get a turnstile song, a yeah. song from sunset roller coaster. Let's get some songs from them on here. There's a brand cool. called there's a band called Prep. Prep? Yeah, P R E P. Okay. They're blowing up on TikTok because they covered one of Harry Styles' song, but they, they you know they did their own version of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. I'm like looking at my Spotify now, like all the stuff I listen to. <laughs> I mean, you know how like Spotify makes your own playlist, so yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I always go back to like the music that I used to listen to growing up and it's either like, you know, Bob Marley, 311, Incubus Deftones. Um, in my early days, one of my first like introduction to electronic music was I always used to skate to my local um, record store and mm-hmm. I would just pick out random stuff. Um, and then there was this one song that came out that uh, it's called Firestarter by Prodigy. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, Prodigy. Uh, yeah. That was like my first introduction to that kind of style of well i don't know what you would call it it's like it's electronic but yeah yeah so we there's a lot of like i guess like techno i guess they call it dubstep now which is all in the same like realm techno and and dubstep uh but yeah yeah i remember prodigy One one of my first or my first gig ever as a you know i wasn't uh mixing at the time but i was helping setting up sound systems and i uh, we did this gig, and it was Skrillex's first gig as Skrillex. Oh wow! Oh, that was that's nice. I just knew that he was from coming from a band that I used to listen to. Um, yeah, from first and, to last. Yeah. Yes. So I knew him from that, and yeah, he he was the headliner at like some roller skating rink, and it was for a company that actually did like live streaming. So. There was like seventy thousand people live streaming, God. and there's like thirty people at this at this show. <laughs> wow, that's crazy! Yeah, I never in a million years thought that Sonny would have blown up the way he did like that. Man, that's insane! Indeed. Yeah, yeah that's Legend. crazy. Legend for sure, dude. I mean, even I mean, he was like fifteen years old writing like some of the greatest emo lyrics ever. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> It's so crazy, man. I mean, he just he just has like mountains of talent, bro. It's it's insane. Yep. Uh, yeah, let's go with Turnstile, man. You got your favorite Turnstile song? Uh, let's go with Underwater Boy. TLC. TLC. Yeah. All right, we'll throw TLC on there too. And you said Sunset Roller Coaster. Yeah, it's called Angel Disco Love, I think. All right, and then the other one you mentioned was is a uh, Coop. Uh, Kuko. Kuko, okay. Yeah. How do you spell that? C O C U C O. Okay, C U C O. Um, that one's gotta be feelings. I have a pick for Kuko. It's on okay. my list right now. We had to end it. And then prep? Uh prep, it's gotta be cold fire. I think I threw um Firestarter from Prodigy on there. Uh, nice. And I th- you mentioned another one too, um, Bob Marley 311 stuff like that. You want to throw any of those on there? Yeah, um, jamming by J- Bob Marley. Jamming, uh, <laughs> jamming. <laughs> Champagne by 311. Okay. I got to throw some Dead Mouse in there because that's what got me really into electronic music. Yeah. That's where I learned all that four on the floor stuff and I played drums to it. Um, I was, I went to Musicians Institute in Hollywood um, in my early twenties and I took a class called digital drumming and yeah. the, the teacher really taught how to play drums to a playback where, you know, the flip, like an electronic drum beat. So that was definitely my intro- introduction to playing that kind of style of music, which helped me in the long run. <laughs> For sure. Um, Brazil, second edit from Dead Mouse. All right. And then I remember. We got it, man. Um, can y'all give us the last thing you listen to on Spotify? Be honest. 
Dang. <laughs> How do you find that? Um, so if you look on your phone, there should be like a, like at the top of the app, there should be like a little clock. Uh, it kind of looks like a little clock. This is your recent listens. Cozy winter cabin, cabin ambience. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sleep sounds. <laughs> Yeah, he was honest. <laughs> there we go. He's trying to get to sleep, man. <laughs> Dude, I share my Spotify with my kids, and so they just destroy it. Um, no, master no. of pu- master of puppets. <laughs> master of puppets. Don't, don't don't blame the kids now. Come on. Yeah, it's never the kids' fault. Hey, you know what, man? I I feel your pain. <laughs> We've got like Disney radio. My wife does. You, I let them use my wife's the most. <laughs> Uh, we also like to kind of help promote two of your songs as well by throwing two of your songs on here we'll start the playlist off with one and then we'll also have one as the last song in the playlist is there two songs from you guys that you want to throw on here mm-hmm. i'd say rainy okay yeah and i don't know Dep- i think Dep- what's it called? depth 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 uh, d-e-p d-e-p d okay yeah Dep- okay adam you want to do the yep we also want to give you guys the opportunity to sort of shout out your socials, any upcoming shows or any other, you know, new music or just shout out some friends, you know, this is your, your spotlight. Uh, yeah, no, no, we, we don't have any shows right now. Just con- loose conversations of certain things, but nothing on the books. Um, we just released a video today yeah. out of love live at our EP release show. Okay. And we'll that, probably release um, a few more of those from that same lot from that same show. Nice. And then our live from home. See yeah. that on the Tooth and Nail YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, and then your socials. Your social media uh, handles. Deep Al Brindle. On everything. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Deep Al Brindle. Go check them out. Um, sweet electronic music. It's smooth. The production's great. It sounds great. Like I, I really enjoyed it. So. Thanks for but, listening and, and actually like doing the homework. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, cool. I, um, I have to. Yeah. Which one of you? Ha- no, it was, it was Diego, right? You got the driving skills, <laughs> <laughs> the driving skills. Oh, <laughs> that was, was homeboy. I was, I was Yeah. That was gnarly. Yeah. That was, that was a funny. Yeah. Yeah, I, man, it almost like looked like it was on purpose because it was yeah. going slow, slow, and then it was like, what? Yeah, then you. <laughs> I know, man. It was so crazy. It was raining so hard that day, and I was just trying to rush through everything. And I was just backing up my car into the trailer, and I get out of my car, and, and my car starts just going in reverse. And I'm like, I didn't put it in park, so I jumped in my car, and I tried to slam on the brake as hard as I could, oh. and I slammed on the gas, dude. Oh no. <laughs> Oh that's what gosh. happened oh no that's a nice right. alibi that's a nice yeah, alibi yeah. it was well, right before a show we were loading up for a show uh-huh. oh man uh, so it was kind of one of those like that, I, that car it doesn't really matter to me it, it's just kind of a beater car but it was funny that it happened that was yeah. at least your car right yes it was my oh, okay car. so it was yeah. just like you know friendly fire at least it wasn't yeah. somebody yeah. else's that would have been a mess <laughs> yeah that would have that would have sucked yeah, that yeah. Would have been terrible. Yeah. Okay. If we would have had to deal with that, we would have been late. To, yeah, to, like, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, that would ruin everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was my car. Yeah, so you guys want to know what we're talking about? Go check out the video. We're not going to spoil it yeah, here. Yeah, on their Instagram. Um, <laughs> yep, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us. Love, love what you do, and, and hopefully, you know, keep it up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye. Have a good one. You too.